Hello, it's David Taylor Klaus, and welcome to Mindset Mondays with DTK. This is episode number 43, and Mindset Monday is a year-long program designed to help those folks with a growth mindset explore new ideas, new concepts, and try on and play with new mindsets. And what I love is it's also for folks who want to shape a growth mindset. More about that in a minute. So the piece today, let me promote this one to the stage. Um, if you ever want to get a concept of why Carol Dweck's work on growth mindset versus fixed mindset is important, here's the answer. And this is why I fell in love with her work. Um, Becoming is better than being. This is from Carol's work in the early 2000s on growth versus fixed mindset, her body of work around mindset. And I mean, this really captures it perfectly. Becoming is better than being. There is no there there. We're never done, right? God, if we were done, I'm in trouble. <laughs> There's so much more that I want to do and so much growth that I want. And Good God, if I'm, if, if I'm finished now, I'm dead. <laughs> um, and those around me would really like to see me continue to grow. I know. Love bite. <laughs> um, so this is the, the playground today. Becoming is better than being. You know, I got my first taste of the concept of what Carol Dweck would call a fixed mindset. The idea that we are born with the script written, with our capacity and our capability all cast in stone, as it were. Um, back when I learned about the idea of the homunculus, this was a concept back from literally 1537 was the first time it was mentioned. Um, Periclesis, the idea was that in the sperm was a minuscule, a microscopic, but fully formed human being. And that was the mechanism by which when a woman was impregnated, that's how the fetus was actually formed. Um, the idea that mankind entered this world fully formed because it entered the reproductive process fully formed. Shocking. <laughs> I mean, you know, fine, I, I, in seventh grade when I learned this, I found it kind of funny how overly simplistic it was, um, considering we had no mechanism to see what it was that they were describing. But then there was that horrifying idea that, holy crap, what if we are fully baked at birth? What if it's just a matter of growing to realize what's already there? Yeah, I don't buy that. <laughs> And, and all the science that we've got now behind, forget the reproductive process, the <laughs> science we have around mindset and intelligence and growth and expansion and neuroplasticity, the science <laughs> supports the fact that there's no there there. We're never done. In progress, right? we are always always have the opportunity to expand and grow. And that's a remarkable opportunity that's presented in that. If our capacity and our creativity and our intelligence is not set in stone, they are in fact limitless, at least our capacity and our creativity are boundless then that means our possibility is boundless. So although being the sense of connection and presence, being fully present and aware, yes, that sense of being is, there's nothing better that than connected to your state of being. And yet in terms of our growth and development, Wow, becoming is much better than being. I don't want to be done. I want to keep growing. I want to keep becoming. I want the opportunities that come with that boundlessness. I don't know. I think we all get a bit nostalgic and strategic at the same point towards the end of the year. 
<clears throat> looking back on what we've done and yet looking forward to what we can create, what we can do next, or at least I do. It's like, there's so much more that gets to be created. There's so much more that wants to be created. There's so much more possibility. So when you look at this, quote, becoming is better than being. As you take that in, what comes up for you? You know, what are the possibilities that are here for you? Becoming is better than being. Um, the email that went out with this week's notice for the broadcast is, when you close this with the question, what are you becoming? Right? What are you becoming? And they'll learn, maybe I'll become a typist, but <laughs> what are you becoming? What's the possibility for you? Lynn, I love that. Thank you for adding it. <laughs> it is, it's all about the journey, not the destination. The learning, at least the learning I take is always along the journey. There's so much that's come out of this Mindset Mondays project for me. Um, you know, it started off for me as a stretch, a, 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 a poking at my growth edges to get out there and put myself out in the world in a different way and have the conversations and not making it about the pitch, but being out just having the conversation. But the learning that's come from it for me and for the folks that are part of this community and the folks that are online and having these conversations. The opportunity to play with the idea of a growth mindset, let alone embrace it. The opportunity for folk to expand. Shannon Graham talks about desire. You know, desire is expansion seeking to express itself. And growth mindset's a requirement for expansion, growth mindset, the belief in the idea that, that we are not fixed in time and fixed in capacity and fixed in capability, that we are able to grow just that, owning that idea, being with that idea, how remarkable. Uh, for me, that is the journey, right? Is embracing the idea that there's more, embracing the idea that there's something else to explore, <laughs> that, there's more of me to meet, to find, to explore, to unleash. Yeah, and, and Bill posted that goes back, this conversation goes back to the session on perfect being the enemy of good. The perfect is a binary state. It either is perfect or it isn't like unique. It either is unique or it's not unique. You can't be uniquer or more unique, you can't be more perfect. You're perfect or you're not. So perfect is a destination state and we don't have that. Getting out of the medical, you know, leaving out the spiritual or the metaphysical, the only binary state I know of is we are alive or dead. You can't be more dead. <laughs> All right, true, you can be more alive. But the idea is, Perfect is the enemy of good, getting moving, choosing to try on a new way of being, a new way of thinking, right? Not waiting until you have it just right, not waiting until it's perfect until you act, but acting, getting to a place where it's good enough and stepping out into the world and you know, refining as you go, painting the wings while, you're, while the, the plane is in the air. Yeah, and, and Paula says, life is a long journey and the learning never stops. God willing, it's a long journey. You know, having crossed the 50 mark a number of years ago, yeah, I talk about this as entering my back 50. I have no idea how long I have. 
operating under the assumption that I've got another 50 ish left. And that's a great mindset for me. It's my back 50. It's the next half of my life. It's an opportunity to do more and do different and expand and, and shape myself and have more impact and expand my reach. And the back 50 is a great way for me to hold this next chapter of my world. So I'm really struck by this in, in particular, um, that idea of becoming is better than being. You know, language alone is, is just a great playground. Um, as much as I talk about being and, and being in the moment and being fully present, there is that piece about becoming. It fits with you know, what I keep on the back of my phone and what I keep on the back of all of my decks of cards. Achieving more requires becoming more. Becoming is a huge piece of the way I see the world. I've been a, in a constant state of becoming. I look at these kids that are trying desperately to figure out where they want to go to college <laughs> and all the schools they're applying to and trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. Holy crap. I have been so many different things as I've continued to grow up. There's such an opportunity in deciding what you want to be next and what you want to become next. And knowing that, oh my God, we've got so much time left and the opportunity to become so many things. Kids coming out of high school right now have the opportunity to decide what they want to become next, what they want to be next. It's so freeing to hold the idea of what is it that I want to become next? What do I want to be next? What do I want to try next? You know, George H.W. Bush just passed uh, over the weekend. And I have such vivid memories, and they even played some of the videos of it, of him on, on several of his recent milestone birthdays, jumping out of an airplane. Um, because it was about being free in a different way. And it was about exploring things in a different way. And I think that sort of speaks to what you're asking, Lynn. What do you do when you're not sure which thing you should pick? Um, maybe start with the idea, which thing I should pick next. It's not that, I mean, other than George Bush, George Bush Sr. jumping out of an airplane, you know, picking that one next. George Bush, the younger, decided to pick painting next. Doesn't matter if you're good at it, clearly. Doesn't matter if you're good at it. The idea is pick something next. Pick the one that makes your heart sing the most. Pick the one that aligns most with your values. And if you can't differentiate between two, pick one. <laughs> Nothing is set in stone. It's the opportunity to explore. There is no wrong choice other than not choosing. And it is, it's trying to figure out what the right one is, is paralyzing. <laughs> we talk some of the systems work, looking at what system are we gonna use? What process are we gonna use? The system that works best is the one that gets used. We're talking about this in conversations the last couple of weeks about change management, that first basic rule. Pick something that is both easy to do and likely to make a difference. You can find something that's easy to do and you can find something that's likely to make a difference. The idea is to pick something that's both, right? Both easy to do and likely to make a difference. So Lynn, what do you do when you're not sure which thing you should pick? Pick the one that checks more boxes. And you and I've had some fabulous conversations about currencies. What are the currencies that move you? Other than dollars, what are the things 
that move you in your world, time freedom, travel, flexibility, latitude, time with kids, time with grandkids. What are the currencies by which you can measure your success or your happiness or the value of things around you? Pick your currencies and look at which of these things to pick based on which one feeds more. For me, most of it is letting go of the idea of picking the right thing. Forget the right thing. God knows. I can only tell if it's right looking backwards. Looking forwards, I can guess. You know, I can guess. But I can make the decision and then make the decision right. Pick the thing that I'm going to pursue and pour myself into it. Can avoid the paralysis by analysis, Bill. It's just make a decision and make the decision right. The second guessing is soul crushing and serves nothing. Back to becoming is better than being, right? Becoming more clear, becoming more creative, becoming next, becoming. So we just launched into the last month of the year, and it really is an opportunity to look at 2019 and decide what it is that we all want to become. What will the year be marked by? How will we look at what we've done for 2019? What will we hope to become? So for the next week, hang on to this idea of becoming is better than being and have the conversation. What is it that you want to become? What is it that you're already becoming? So between now and next week, what mindset will you choose?